Okay. Great. Well, thanks everybody for hanging in there with technology issues. Um, just a few housekeeping tips. Um, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself when you're, um, we can go back in. If you wouldn't mind muting yourself when you're not talking, um, that'll help everyone else to be able to hear. Um, there is a Zoom chat. Um, if you go down to the bottom of your screen, there should be a little, a little bar that pops up and there's a little chat. And so you can chat with other people. Hi, Lois. I see that you chatted with me and Mary chatted. <clears throat> so if you wanna chat with folks, you can. Um, and then uh, this session um, is also being recorded so we can go back and look later if we want to. And uh, we're gonna have breakout sessions at the end. So if there was a project that you were working on previously, um, you'll be able to continue working with people, <clears throat> excuse me, on that project. Um, okay, so go ahead to the next screen, Anne. All right, so um, if you wouldn't mind, really quickly, just write down uh, or let us know in the chat box what project you were working on. Um, we've got landscaping and land management, agriculture and food, building renewables and infrastructure, health and wellness, and single use reduction. So if you chat right now um, what you guys were working on before or what you want to work on now, then when we go out into our breakout sessions after the presentation, we'll be able to then pop everybody in the correct room. So everyone will be good to go. <clears throat> and if you don't want, if you don't have a project you were working on and you want to do whatever Zoom decides you <laughs> where you should go, we can pop you into wherever you, um, wherever um, it, it decides. So, um, great. All right, go ahead, Anne. All right, so we've got three presenters today. Um, I'm Jillian from Promote PT, and we've got Alyssa Beck, founder of um, Sustainable Monroeville, and Sally Lipsky, PhD. She's a plant-based nutrition, uh, nutrition educator and author of Beyond Cancer, The Powerful Effect of Plant-Based Eating. So go ahead, Anne. All right, so Alyssa, you're, you're up first. Um, so everyone's gonna mute their microphone so Alyssa can do her wonderful um, exercise and hopefully we feel refreshed afterwards. So go ahead, take it away, Alyssa. Okay, so how are you doing everybody? Um, um, I saw some thumbs up from Jillian. I'm um, working myself to calm myself because right now I'm holding my phone with one hand and I am going to walk around my house to try to find a place to set this up. How about if I just lean it, lean it there? Okay, I think you can see me. So um, what we're going to go through is just some activities to rest and restore while we're in our homes or very close to our homes for a period of time. Ah, so just remembering always to come back to your breath. Um, if you're sitting in a chair, feeling your sit bones on the chair, feeling your feet on the floor, coming back to your breath, bringing one hand to your chest, another to your abdomen, perhaps closing your eyes gently, inhaling through your nose, opening your mouth gently to exhale. Just taking a few breaths, all the while noticing your hands on your body. Noticing perhaps some voices in the background. So maybe even while you're having a meeting and asking those in your house <laughs> to uh, disappear, they're, they're still there with their voices in the background. Again, coming back to your breath, noticing your breath. Now placing one hand on your third eye between your eyebrows, and the other hand just above your belly button, just gently lifting up your skin, bringing some energy 
from deep in the earth, through the bottoms of your feet, all the way through your legs, torso, head and neck. And then rubbing your hands together and placing the heels of your hands on the lower orbital bone, very gently crossing your hands, coming back to your breath, inhaling, inhaling all the beautiful air around you, exhaling whatever you don't need anymore, stress, tension, news, taking a few breaths, noticing the darkness, and remembering that from darkness, deep darkness, comes light as you gently lower your hands with your eyes closed, noticing some light coming in, and then kind of fluttering your eyes to open them gently. And now just bringing your hands to your center and moving them to the sides. Moving kind of stuck energy away, bringing in kind of light and love from all around you, bathing yourself, knowing that the air around you is not nothingness, it's somethingness. Bringing goodness into you, bathing your whole body in that. And then doing some tapping. So very gently tapping either on your eyebrow or slightly above your eyebrows, knowing that in these times, as you tap to the side of your eyes, in these times of transformation, we're moving, as you move your fingers to your lower orbital bone and tap gently, we're moving into a new earth, tapping below your nose, tapping just below your lower lip, and then tapping on your thymus, improving your immunity, this beautiful space in your chest, coming back to your breath as you cross your arms over and tapping just below your armpits, and then coming back to the central part of your crown, waking up your connection to the earth, the sky, and then just shaking it all out. And remembering that you can do these types of activities at any time during the day, um, just to come back to your own awareness. So thank you for participating in a little recharge, and I will um, turn it back to Jillian. Great, thank you. Yeah, I've been working all day, and that was a really nice break. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> so, um, all right. So go, we can go ahead in the next screen and um, introduce Sally. So Sally, um, she's a plant-based nutritionist, nutrition educator and author of Beyond Cancer, The Powerful Effect of Plant-Based Eating. Uh, she founded a nonprofit food and health, uh, food for health. And uh, so go ahead, take away Sally. We're gonna switch to your slides right now. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, and feel free, since there's not many of us, feel free to unmute, ask questions. Um, there's about a dozen slides. Okay, so, so, wait, okay. <laughs> um, um, where, do, where would you like me to, do you want me to keep it up here for a minute? Um, no, no. So I, yeah, I'm ready for, I'm just going to start in the second slide. There we go. Okay. Here, I'm going to give you control so you can take, so you can scroll. You okay, go. so let's just start quickly about why plant-based or plant-centered eating is so important, especially at this time when we're worried about our resources, our health. Regarding health, 
there's nothing like plant foods for getting you all the needed nutrients. They're called phytonutrients and plant foods have very high anti-inflammatory. You can see antioxidants, how much um, stronger they are than animal foods and they really do work to enhance and strengthen your immune system and fiber. We are so, as a, as a um, Western diets, we really, only 3% of the people even get the minimum fiber and they're only in plant foods. Animal foods have no fiber and it really is important for the gut, the microbiome and helping with your immune system. Um, so that's a big one. Um, number two is cost. As you will see, if you was slowly start eliminating or cutting down on dairy, meat, fish, um, animal foods, you will be spending a lot less money, significantly less expensive. Third is storage. When we go to the store in these times, we want to get as many foods as we can and limit the amount of time that we need to go out. And plant foods do store. They keep longer than animal foods. Okay. I saw there's a piece in the open, but yeah. You're able to um, scroll? Yes. Oh, yeah, Alyssa just said there's a piece on immunity. If when they've done, um, I'm somehow, yeah, it's not going down. It's not letting you, okay, here, I'll just do it for you. Thank you. Okay, and, and I really need to talk also about our planetary resources. It's not only healthy for our bodies, but it's healthy for our planet. So I wanted to put in some information there just to show you how crucial it is to cut back on eating animals and, and supplement that with a diet rich in plant foods. So I'll just give you a moment here um, just to look at that information. I, I especially wanted you to see that just came up, if the world went vegan today, the amazing amount of lives, a reduction in greenhouse gases, and the savings in climate damages. It's really amazing. Okay, next. So let's just do some basic. If you're not familiar, what do, if you're centering your eating on plants, there are four food groups, grains and, and a wide variety of grains. And, and again, these are um, grains keep a long time. So that's very good. Vegetables, and that's what most people usually think of in plant-centered eating is vegetables, but you can see it's all not just vegetables and salads, it's also a some legumes and fruits. And the multicolor varieties, because the colors of all these plants work together. There's this sort of um, intermingling when you're eating it, and they really optimize the nutritional value. So I just gave you an example. You're going to see some more examples from my um, kitchen here. And by the way, I do not like to cook. I, I, I sort of put together meals. I don't like to cook. But I just wanted to show you an example with all of the different four food groups. Okay, so this is the, the way, as I say, I judge recipes by how long they are. I want short. So I've come up with this way, three steps. And I wanted to share this with you because it's a good way of looking at you know, any dishes, any meals that you're doing, you can start with complex carbohydrates. It's so important in carbohydrates, we have to make that distinction since carbohydrates get such a bad rap. Um, but the complex carbohydrates is what we need to keep us going, to keep the fiber. And you, as I said, you can do it 
um, canned, bagged, or bulk, fresh, or frozen. So canned beans are fine. You know, I rely heavily on frozen also. So I just wanted to quickly give you um, some examples of typical things that you can start with are the grains that, and add some starchy vegetables, some beans, lentils, soy. Okay, next one. And then when, after you've started with that, then you add more variety. You can add non-starchy vegetables and or fruit. I should have put an and or or. But again, it doesn't have to be fresh, especially where we live, because frozen is mentioned in the upper right-hand corner. It's flash frozen. So it's really as nutritious as fresh. And it's also very convenient in this time. So just some examples of common non-starchy vegetables and fruits that um, we tend to get. Of course, there's a wide variety. Okay, and then the last step, the next slide, is how do you want to flavor it? So I put down just some things that my family goes to and, and a lot of plant-based eaters do. You know, a lot of applesauce, um, cocoa powder, herbs, you know, just some basic, you can look down there, the non-dairy milks. I put, there's a variety of non-dairy milks. Some are, are better than others as far as from a nutritional standpoint. But the bottom line is you wanna get a milk that tastes good to you and your family members and just go with it. Um, you try to get some of the milks without the added sugar and added oils in it. You can make your own almond milk, oat milk, but I always go for convenience. And I also put a little nutritional yeast there. It has a lot of B vitamins. It's, it's an inactive yeast and it's really good as a cheese substitute and a flavoring and sauces. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So I wanted to put up some examples, as I said, for, uh, that I've done. And you can see the three steps. My, uh, my go-to is oatmeal. I love oatmeal. Or I bake with oatmeal, I just grind it in flour. So oatmeal, frozen berry, cinnamon, I add some greens if I have them. Um, but you can take a multigrain bagel or toast or a roll and add some nut butter on. And you can add some, again, sliced fruit on it. Some cereal, fine. If you have to be careful and read the label, some of those cereals, or especially the sugar content. But um, the, the heated canned sweet potato puree, I had that today. I just love that. I could eat it. It's, it's so easy. I get a can of sweet potatoes and mix it all together. It's, it's absolutely yummy. Okay, next one, lunch and dinner examples. So the top right um, photo is a pasta and again, a marinara sauce. You can find, get the jars. You don't have to make it from scratch if you um, add some beans to it and a tossed salad on the side. I, if I use the sauce, jarred sauce, I tend to get a can of, like this one has some chunky tomatoes or a package of chunky tomatoes and add to it. And, and maybe my own, you know, especially if it's, you watch the sodium content it tends to be. And then you can add some more spices to it. The sauteed, those are leftover to, um, potatoes. You can just cook potatoes in microwave if you're in a crunch there, frozen peas, and sauteing some vegetables. And then the, of course, potatoes, love potatoes. So much you can do with the potatoes. And then the last one is this picture of an orzo um, salad. Okay. 
And I wanted to show you last week, I just wanted to show you a quick pizza that I made. And you can just get, again, you can just get a packaged pizza shell. And I took some tomato paste and I took some hummus and mixed it together with some Italian seasoning and garlic powder and just spread it on the bottom. And then there you can put on whatever's in the refrigerator, basically, um, I had canned mushrooms, frozen butternut squash from Aldi's. They have um, these chunks of butternut squash. And I don't use cheese. Um, I don't use any dairy. So I make a, you can buy non-dairy cheeses, but I, it's a lot cheaper and for, it's easy to make it like a cashew. And that, and I showed you the recipe there with the ingredients that I always keep in my refrigerator. I have a jar of cashew parmesan. And then this is really Jeff Novick. He's a um, plant-based nutritionist, and he came up with this ten-minute meal. And um, a number of years ago, I was at a conference, and he made this a presentation, and he had somebody come up, a gentleman who was never cooked, he said, and I believe it. And he had him open, do this, and it was under 10 minutes. So it, it was actually timed. Um, and he's, he has this packaged tomatoes, frozen vegetables, canned beans, starch, seasoning. It's very similar to the three steps I use. But if you can get, even go on to the website, and he has all kinds of, of different um, variations and certainly do batch cooking. Yes, so on the next slide is my example of a 10 minute one pot meal. I believe strongly in one pot meals, cooking in large amounts so that you can freeze some, you have leftovers you can add to the next day. Um, this one is, is quinoa with frozen mixed vegetables and some beans and some salsa or servings and it's so, quick and easy. And then I just wanted to finally just make you aware of if you're interested in more and you want to be with the group because, you know, plant-centered eating, eating is not the norm. You're, you're really traveling against the stream um, of their standard American diet. But we have meetings, well, in normal times, we have monthly meetings in four different areas of the city. You can sign up for the newsletter. Um, we have a directory, cooking demos. And, and the cooking demos usually are out in Murraysville area because um, we have use of the library there. So that is it. I will take any questions that you might have. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Yeah, you said, let's want to know, is there any virtual meetings now? The newsletter just went out this week. I am trying to set up a, a virtual meeting at the beginning of May um, with a local plant-based doctor, primary care doctor, um, because I think it'd be great to open up to all. There's over 1,300 people that get this newsletter in the greater Pittsburgh area. So I thought really it'd be good to hear from this um, this physician and her perspective. So yes, we are. I'm working on it. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Did anybody else have any questions before we move on to the next? No, I, was, I was just going to ask about whether or not you think there are more. Um, varieties by color that would indicate that those particular vegetables were anti-inflammatory you know like your deep colors like well the rule of thumb is that the deeper the color the more concentration that it has of the nutrients um so therefore therefore yes however again it is it is just go for color. That's what I tell people. Go for color and, and you can't go wrong. Yeah, just like grandma said. 
eat all, you know, she had all the colors on. Have the, yes. And eat what you like. There's no superfoods. If you don't like it, don't eat it. My heaven. I think I have a question. Yes. Um, so you said that whenever things are flash frozen, you don't, you uh, lose many nutri nutrients. Right. Um, but if I am taking something from my garden and I am freezing it, I assume that's not flash frozen. Um, am I losing a lot of nutrition that way? I wouldn't think so. No. Thank you. Is the key to, is it the freezing it fresh from the garden that's saving the nutrients, I suppose? I would say usually the rule of thumb is three days after um, a plant comes from the garden, that's when the nutritional value starts to decline. So the rule of thumb is if using it, if you're going to eat it, try to use it within three days. And if not, then certainly uh, the option is freezing it. The only problem with freezing is it does change the consistency, especially those plant foods that are high in water content, you know, it will change the consistency of it when you defrost it, but it's good for cooking. I got a question about corn. Yeah. Um, is there any corn uh, that is, is not uh, laced with uh, GMO? Um, yes. Sure. Um, I would ask, but it, it's, it's about most of, let's talk about corn and soy. Okay. The vast amount of corn and soy that has the genetically modified and um, has the pesticides on high mount are fed to animals. Okay. Which is another reason that because you are ingesting those indirectly. So the vast amount, if you're looking at corn and you're looking at soy, most of what you're gonna see is, is not um, of high, the, um, wait, where will we go? I'm losing the word there. Um, GMO and the, the high amount of the pesticides on it, okay. For soy, I recommend doing organic. And, and then when, I, when you buy um, produce, the other thing is the environmental working group. You know, if, again, if, especially if you're concerned about cost, go with the, envir the environmental working group, the Dirty Dozen, Thin Skin tend to have the highest concentration. Um, and then they also have, I look for Melissa, yeah. The reason I hesitate, GMO has been around for so many, so long. Um, the problem more recently with the GMOs is the um, Monsanto's use of the um, strong pesticides. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to give this back to Jillian. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Sally. That was really great and informative. I'm excited. Thank you. Whoops. Okay, Jillian, I'm going to give you. Whoops. All right. Is it, if you, you have control now. You, it says you are controlling the screen, but I do not have control. All right. Is my keyboard? Yes. Mm, nope, it's still not giving me control, Anne. Hmm. Well, I can control it for you. Okay, that's all right. It's confused because right. we're both on here. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So we have... Um, We've had some, some health and wellness. We've had some wonderful meeting tips. We have a kitty cat that just barged in my bedroom. Um, and so, you know, we have all these great projects that we've been working on. Um, and how do we continue to do that? 
when we're, we're, when we're living in a time when we have to be, meet virtually. So we're gonna show you some tips on how to do that. And hopefully it will give you a good idea of uh, how you all can meet and keep continuing the great, good work that you've been doing um, from the reimagine effort. Um, go ahead, Anne. So you can, um, you can work together no matter where you are. Uh, you don't have to physically be together to work together. Um, and this is how we keep movements going uh, with the social distancing. And, um, and with that, sometimes it, it takes a little adaptation. We have to change some things in our life. And, and change can be difficult at times, but uh, also very rewarding. And so we can work together no matter where we are. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes we find that these things actually increase our productivity and our efficiency. Um, we can work in real time together and that makes it so uh, we can um, you know, really, it's almost like if you have a piece of paper and someone else is able to write on your notebook while you're writing on your notebook um, on the next line. And so you really can write together, you can um, work together, you can see each other. And um, really in this world where we're now socially distant, um, we're not really socially distant. Alyssa likes to say physically distant, which I think is a really good way to think about it, um, where we're not, we're actually learning how to be social from afar. So go ahead and hit next, there we go. So the tool, the, ma the main tool that we use because it's free, um, everyone has access to it or can have access to it is the G Suite. Um, and so this is the, all the Google tools. And so there's similar versions of these things out there. Some of them are free and some are not. Um, so the drive is really a place to put all your files. And so um, when you're thinking about files you know we think about computer files now and that's been that's been it for a while but you know if you if you still use those manila file folders like i i always keep a backup of everything in a um in paper format then you can think of your little manila file folder and that's your file and the drive is the same thing you have all your files in your filing cabinet only it's on a virtual screen um, and you can use things like Google Docs that are just like um, Word, Microsoft Word, or uh, in the Microsoft Office Suite. Um, Sheets is just like Excel. Um, there are some differences and actually some really great advantages to, to using these programs instead of using the Microsoft Office. Um, and we're going to demonstrate some of those things for you. Uh, there's also PowerPoint. Um, so Sally actually did her slides on PowerPoint and the slides that we're seeing right now are on uh, Google Slides. So they're super adaptable and you can use both. And then we're actually doing a Zoom meeting right now, but there's also Google Meetings and Google Hangouts, which uh, is like a Zoom and Skype. And um, you can do all kinds of stuff with Google Forms if you want to get into doing like surveying your friends. Um, at the end of this, we're going to ask you to do a survey. It's actually a Google Form. Um, so go ahead and hit the next screen. And so what is G Suite? This, these are all just um, free applications um, that can be used and there are different programs to link files, live grouping, live group editing which is really cool we're going to show you a video of that and then some uh and you can control who has access to what file so who's going to get the keys to the filing cabinet or who are you going to lend that file to let's go ahead to the next screen <clears throat> and then so google drive is just simply a file sharing and storage system um, you can synchronize and, and people can add files to your filing cabinet without physically being there, uh, which is really cool. Um, you can share files. You can um, have not only is it sharing and um, storing, but it's also live creating. So you're creating files of your own right in the sharing program. And that's how it's really, really different from things like Dropbox or Box or other file sharing programs, where you're creating documents and sharing them all in one place. Go ahead to the next, thank you.
So we got a little video for you here that we made. And it's going to go ahead and play. It's going to demonstrate for you. Um, so this is my screen. And I'm going to go to my, my apps. So you can see I'm um, up there in the corner. We've got the apps. We've got all of our Google apps there. And I'm going to pick my drive. I've got some of my um, some of my files. I'm going to make sure I'm signed in correctly. You can see I have different sign-ins because I have multiple accounts that I work from. Um, I have my files uh, that I can go into right there <clears throat> in my drive and they're all stored. There's my filing cabinet. You can see with the little file folders. I've got the shared with me so if people can share files with me. Uh, there's the Google training file I shared with myself and all the documents pertaining to that particular training. So again, I created and shared all this in the same time. I can um, add a shortcut or add this to my own file, filing cabinet. If someone shares a filing cabinet with you or shares a file with you, you can add it to your, your own file. Um, kind of like making your own copy um, of your file for yourself. So it's really cool. But then when people go back in there, um, to put new files in, then you can see those new files too. So you've got your, your I don't have anything starred, you've got some trash in there. Um, so this is just a really quick kind of once over of the, the system. You have your Gmail, everything's all in one place, your drive, your calendar, all of your different G Suite tools. So you've got all your tools in one place. All right, next slide. Okay, so Google Docs. Um, what is a doc? It is a same, it's just a document. Um, letters, reports, memos, handouts. And the cool thing is you can track changes and you can do this live while you're collaborating, which is really neat. You can see at the top of the screen, um, this is, we, I got a screenshot from here. Um, I was actually collaborating with Mary and Anne and myself as I was logged in as Protect PT. So um, you can see who else is collaborating with you. Go ahead, next. So this is a little um, video on how Mary and Ann and I collaborated on a document together. So we open up a document. I have a couple titles. Uh, I want um, them to collaborate with me. And so we're adding different points in here. We're, we're working together. We can actually go in and, and highlight different things. We can make changes. I can say, no, I don't really want that change. Um, I'm gonna hit no. Um, we can comment on each other's work. So hi everyone, this is really good. Um, so I can give my team a, 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 you know, a, hand, um, a high five when they're doing a really great job. Um, other members of my team, I can talk to them, I can tag them. So there I tagged Anne in this comment. So she, it notifies her by email that I've been, uh, that I tagged her in this comment and that I would like her to collaborate with me. So if you're working on something with someone, you can um, tag them in a comment with your email and then it'll pop up in their email that you tag them. It'll give them a notification that you would like to collaborate with them. And it's, it's just a really cool way for us to work together. Um, and you can go and suggest changes or you can edit. So let's say if you're working with somebody and you don't wanna make changes to a document, but you just wanna suggest certain changes, uh, it's just a polite way of working together. Um, there's a chat feature up there. You can see I opened the chat box um, up by our little, uh, our little pictures, and now we are actively chatting. So if you're working with someone um, and you're both online, but you're not on a video call or anything, you can still talk to each other um, and chat with each other and just see how, and just check in and see how everybody's doing. So we did this earlier today. And then when everyone has contributed to the document, you can go in and, and make all your changes. You can accept all your changes and all the people and all the con contributions that your team helped you put in there, which is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna accept all the changes. I really like what everyone in 
put into the document and how they helped me write this document together. Um, uh, you can also do plugins like Grammarly, so it'll tell you if you have any kind of um, grammar mistakes or punctuation or anything like that. And um, I accidentally took that title out, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and put it in there. So it's really pretty slick. When we started working together on this, we were really amazed how much this tool can do. And so when you're done, you actually have a whole um, a document you can download. Um, everyone has worked together. So everyone really feels like they have contributed to the process. Um, all their ideas were taken into consideration. You can thank people by making comments. And um, if, if someone wants to add something, they can add something. Um, and just, a, I know that was kind of a really quick overview. If anyone wants to see the video again, you can see it. Um, well, we can have, give you access to the video. We thought the video would be easier for everyone. Um, and then you can download this document. You can make it into a Word doc and send it out to people. You can make it into a PDF. There's all kinds of different ways you can um, export a document. All right, so does anyone have any questions on that before we move on? Because that was, that was kind of a lot of information. Oh, I had um, just one question. When you're exporting that document, PDF, I realize nobody can edit PDF, but can any of those things be, be editable, ed editable after they're shared, after the document is exported somewhere? So if you export a document, it's, it's like making a copy of it. So you always have your own copy, but you're just making a copy for your friends. It's just and a read only? It, yep. So, well, you can, so if you make it into um, a web, if you make it into a Word document, it will come up as a Word document, just like you can edit it and all that stuff. <clears throat> So, so some, you could email someone a Word document and they could still edit it. Okay. So if there are people that are really not comfortable working this way, which some people aren't and that's okay, but this, this is like super easy because sometimes when you get changes from folks and you, and it gets a little confusing when multiple people are trying to make changes to a document all at once, it gets really, really confusing. Um, so we found that this is the cleanest and easiest way. If you want people to contribute, um, you can tag them in the document and you can um, have them work right in the document with you. Now, I didn't show it, but there's also a way when you share the document to do view only. So it's kind of like instead of downloading it where they can actually um, free format it, do whatever they want to do with the document, you can just share it, doc, share the document in view only mode. And that they they can view it, but they can't make changes to it. So that's another option. We're going to talk about sharing in a minute. Okay, the video is playing again. <laughs> Go ahead to the next screen. All right. Google Sheets is just a spreadsheet. That's all it is. It's a spreadsheet. It's but it's way cooler than a spreadsheet because you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, Go ahead to the next screen. I gave, I did a little video. This is amazing. We started doing this for all our projects. We have tons of projects we work on all simultaneously. And it's really hard to keep track of everything. You'll notice really quickly. Um, and would you mind going back a minute to the beginning? Sorry. Um, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you'll notice on this, whoop, on that screen, I actually have a shortcut for this project tracker here because I use it all the time. Uh, you can make shortcuts on your home screen of your Google. This is our project tracker. We track all of our different projects. See, I have links to the projects in here under the project title. So I can, um, if it's shared with my team, they can click that link and it can open up the document. It can open up that file right away. I can click on Anne, she's in here at the time I'm doing this and I see where her cursor is, where she's working. Um, 
and I'm going to go ahead and click open this document. And um, it's going to show you, boom, we were doing a website audit project. And there's all of our associated documents with our website audit project. And you can see where the root of the folders are, which is really cool. And it's in my drive in my volunteer folder. You can also do things like, again, you can chat with other people um, during your, um, your Google Sheets. So it's not just about Google Docs chat. You can do Google Sheets chat and other different chats in pretty much all these different tools. And then um, you can also filter things too. So um, this project, so we have different statuses for our projects and um, some of them were postponed because of the COVID-19. Some of them are in progress and some of them are completed. So we wanna make sure we mark them as completed um, so we can filter and I'm just gonna unfilter just to show you an example. And then I filter again. So that little cone shape up there is filter. So you just highlight the fields you wanna filter. And then I'm gonna, I wanna get rid of all the stuff we're not like actively working on right this minute. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of the done stuff and see it takes all the done stuff out. And then I'm gonna get rid of the postponed and it doesn't delete it, it just gets it out of my way so I can see everything else. Um, just kind of unclutter my brain a little bit. Um, and boom, here's all the stuff we're doing that are, that's in progress. Here's our due dates. Um, here's when we started it. We've got notes on it. Um, it's all in one place. I can comment so I can tag Anne and say, hey Anne, um, we talked about this this morning. Um, I know you missed the meeting, but you know, just wanted to let you know um, that uh, we, we, we started this project. It's a brand new project and you can chat with folks that way too. So if you go ahead to the next screen. Whoop. Wrong way. There we go. And one more. There we, there we go. All right. So um, slides, we talked about slides a little bit. We're in slides right now. It functions like PowerPoint. You can also do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, you can create graphics and flyers with slides, which is something that we found out from working with someone else and actually collaborating. So if you go to the next slide, we have made some examples. So we were doing this project with two other groups uh, and we wanted to make a flyer. We were like, well, how can we make a flyer together? So we actually went in Google Slides, we reformatted the, the size of it, which you can, you can do your page size to anything just under the file menu and page, <clears throat> page size, you can size the page to a postcard. So we wanted to make a postcard to let the public know about this meeting. Um, we wanted to collaborate. So I wrote in some of the text, our collaborators wrote into some of the text, we decided on the date, we put the date in there, we decided on the, the place, we put all that in there, and boom, when it was done, we had this great postcard. Well, then we found out we were gonna do a full page postcard. So all we had to do was move around all of our little elements to make it fit on the different size. So it was really easy to resize everything, it was re really easy to make our flyers. Um, so just a really great way and, and they could see the changes we were making in real time, which is pretty cool. So go ahead to the next screen. That sounds easier than PowerPoint. Yeah, it, it is easier than PowerPoint. Yeah, there's a lot of functionality to Google Slides. Um, we helped with the, glo the global climate strike back in September, and we were working with, you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six other organizations and organizers um, to make this to make this little brochure that we handed out at the the global client strike um, so this was a two-pager it was a trifold brochure brochure we wanted to make sure the youth demands were were exactly what the youth organizers wanted them to be they could edit this right as we were making it we could put all of our images in there it was just a really great way for us to collaborate and make something that the final product could be exported into a PDF to make a really high quality print. So that's another thing that's really great. Um, and we can see, and so if like I wanted to download it, 
I had access to it. If they want to download it, they had access to it. It's super cool. So go ahead to the next screen. All right, so we're going to talk about file storing. So how do you share things with people and how do you store stuff? Um, so you store things in your drive. Go ahead. I think this is a click through, Anne. <clears throat> so you're going to create your new folder with your drive, your folder with a little plus sign here. These are your little file folders. See, so you're gonna go up to file. Go ahead. I, I split these up, it's okay. You can rename your file. Uh, if you're in a, if you move something to a, fi a file folder, so this, this little symbol, the file with the arrow means move. So you click on your file. You go to the, under the file menu, you go to move. And then you go to you shit you go to what where the file you want to move it to. So you choose your folder. You know, let's say I want to move it to the Mariner East to pipeline folder. I can go ahead and move it there. And I can hit move there and boom, I just moved my folder. I just reorganized my filing cabinet. Soup much easier. <laughs> go ahead to the next one. Okay, so I want to share these files with someone. So I go up to the sharing. So I can click on this little link or uh, this little tab right here and it opens up share. And see this icon, this little, the person with the link behind, below it and sh the word share um, on the right hand side, that is, the, that is the symbol for share or this little guy with the plus symbol, that's the other symbol for share. So go ahead, number step two. Um, so, Again, I can get my link to share it, or I can add people's names and share it by their email. Go ahead, right there. And then this is a link. And um, so you had asked earlier, Lois, if someone could view something but not make changes to it. Do you see the share setting is set to anyone in Protect PT can view it. So I want, I made a document and I want all of my other staff and volunteers to be able to see it, but I don't want them to be able to make changes in it. I can sit, I can set it to view and then just email them the link. And instead of having to email them the whole file and then them download an attachment and some people's computers don't like to download attachments. This is for security purposes. Um, now I have a link and they, don't, they can't do anything with the document except view it. So go ahead to the next slide. And you're gonna click done. When you're finished, you can go to advanced settings. So I wanna change this to make sure that um, people maybe can make changes in my document. You can choose public or private. You can view, view only, share with only certain people. Um, share a link or link with work depending on your share sharing permissions. Um, okay, so you go to your advanced share settings and that pops up and it gives you lots of different options. So you can change, go ahead. There's your link. You can change to, to specific people and you can change the access. So, <clears throat> I have lots of options here. Go ahead and click again. I can share to the public, to the web. I can share anyone with the link. I can share only to people in my organization. If I have a, um, a corporate um, a Gmail, like we have our Protect PT domain, anyone at Protect PT can have it or nobody can have it. It all depends on how I want it to be shared. And this and the next slide will kind of illustrate that a little bit better. So you've got your very confidential files. Um, so when we have we have staff people um, and I want I have employees, I have employee files that has very confidential information in there. No one's allowed to see that except me. So that's where my confidential files are. Only I'm going to be looking at those files. Then I have my files that in the center would be my files that I want to share with my employees. I want to share with my 
um, volunteers, but I don't want anybody just in the public to be able to see it. I just want to share it with certain people. And then you have your public files that anyone can see anything that you've created. So those are the kind of like the three categories I like to lump things that I share into. Um, you also, the cool thing about um, the Google Calendar is if you set up a meeting, you can set up a video meeting, which is a new way that we're doing things right now. Go ahead to click to the next one. And in your meeting, and I think this is a click through too, Anne, um, you've got your, we've got our meeting. You can do your day and time. Is it going to be repeat? Um, are you going to add video conferencing? This, there's a Zoom link added in here. So we've got our, you can add another link or you can click this add conferencing button. Go ahead and click some more. And this will pop up and it says meet, uh, Hangouts Meet. You can click that. And you can decide what account you wanna send it to. And click next. You can um, enter your guest list in here. Whoop. I don't, you've got to, there we go. Hit click again. You can save it or you can hit more actions if you want. <laughs> I think you're right clicking in. That's okay. <laughs> I'm and not then, right clicking, it's getting frozen. I'm not sure what's <laughs> happening. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> um, so you can see then if I go to my, my meeting, my Google meetings, here's all the stuff that was in my calendar for that day. And so if I clicked on these links, it would tell me, uh, it, I, it would take me right to that meeting, which is kind of cool. So go ahead to the next one. And we're just really quickly breezing the, through this because we're gonna get moving on our breakout sessions really soon. Um, but there's lots of features. Um, you can, but this is a free thing. This is free video conferencing. You can share your screen with other people just like we're doing now. Um, there is a limited number of people. Go ahead to click the next one. Uh, you can also do Google Hangouts, which is similar to like a Facebook chat or Facebook app, uh, similar to Skype. They are going to start doing, I've, I heard, um, multiple people being able to be in a Google Hangout. So like if I wanted to hang out with Anne and Mary, um, let's say we wanted to do, we're going to do a virtual happy hour later um, this month for our fifth anniversary, which is um, April 27th. Um, we may do a Google Hangout instead of a Google Meeting, just to be able to have something fun to do. Um, and you can chat with people and video uh, Skype with people. So go ahead and click. And of course, some people are going to find this type of transition di uh, difficult. And there are some potential barriers that people might face. Um, so we just want to recognize that. Um, that some people might not have the technology available. So if you're a nonprofit or you work with a nonprofit, there might be an opportunity for you to have some of this technology or buy some really inexpensively. You could buy something used um, and, uh, or you could, you can't really go to your library right now. Unfortunately, that would be a great way for people to, to have access to this, this technology. Um, but if you can't do a Google meeting or Zoom, you can always call in. There's always a number associated that comes up with that meeting, which is a great thing to do because if you have a phone and you, can, you can't video chat, you can at least join in the conversation. Um, and then there are privacy issues. You know, um, there's, you know, I'm in my bedroom right now. Somebody might not feel comfortable with that. Um, so there are ways to deal with that too. You can, uh, certain technologies allow you to put like a background behind you, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can like change your background to something fun. Um, but there are ways to get around that too. Or you can turn your camera off. You know, the one day I didn't have breakfast and I was in a meeting. <laughs> so I turned my camera off so I can eat my berries and, and fruit. And then I turned it back on when I was done so nobody saw me eating. <laughs> um, so go ahead to the next slide. 
And um, we're going to take some Q&A on this section before we move into our breakout sessions. So if you want to have a question, you can unmute yourself. It's just a supposition, and that is since we are in unknown number of months of being locked down or uh, uh, quarantined, that uh, school and everything else consider we might be nationalizing some things that used to be costly, like Zoom itself. There's a cost associated with Zoom, but they might budget for it. And have you heard that? Yeah, and you know what? There were there are also security issues that could come into play, um, too. Um, so there was a security breach at Zoom uh, a few weeks ago, and so um, that's something you want to be aware of too. And just making sure that you know and are aware of that ahead of time. Um, and How did Google, you find out? <laughs> I'm sorry. How did you find out? I found out through a news article. It wasn't my Zoom. It was someone else. Like I did. I don't know the person, but it was a big. It was a big thing, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of security upgrades after that happened. Um, but there's things like Google. Um, so Google educational tools, which are really awesome. Um, that's how my kids are doing their classwork. They're in Google Classroom, which is really neat, and they have a lot of different types of tools there. Um, and so they're even learning this technology. They're going to be whizzes. And I want to say that, you know, we're going to be living in a world where like, this is going to be potentially um, part of a new norm. And so when you're thinking about, you know, I know there's a lot of people that <clears throat> had to either get furloughed from their jobs or might have had to uh, not, you know, aren't, aren't working right now because of the situation that's going on. They may be looking for new work um, to, you know, for, for, you know, to, to maybe make it a safer environment or because so they can stay home and be with their kids or their family during this time. And knowing this technology is super helpful. It makes you an asset because I'm telling you, if you're out there looking for a job right now and there are other people coming out of college you may have, you know, three times the experience, but if you don't know how to do this video chat, they're going to have a leg up. Um, so it's, it's really important. Like every, everyone that I interview for an internship, one of the questions I ask them is, do you know how to collaborate on Google? Cause if you don't, you're not going to get hired, <laughs> you know? Um, and that was before all this stuff, <laughs> but that's just the way that we work right now in this, in this world. And it just makes it so much easier um, to get stuff done. So I hope that will help you guys understand how we can really keep moving forward with the projects we've been working on, even though we can't meet in person. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Okay. Well, if someone comes up with something later, that's okay too. Um, here's I, just, I, I do want to mention something. Um, so I had registered last week for this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I located the email and I pressed on it. What you just mentioned, I think, about Zoom is already happening. Mm -hmm. Because prior to tonight, on my computer, which is an old computer, I had been joining Zoom through my browser. It didn't let me do that tonight. So they've added some sort of security. Um, and then one of, my, one of our, our kids said that that was true. They had heard that. Mm -hmm. And so then I tried to, uh, I, I was pondering the idea when I was already supposed to be on the meeting of uh, downloading Zoom onto my old computer, which I've been resisting because I don't want the computer to blow up basically. So then I just went right to my phone, um, which is much newer, but I really couldn't follow. I'm just putting this out there because um, I, I, I had mentioned this in our, in our planning meeting. I'm not really keen on all these electronics. So I couldn't really see the slides because my, my phone is much too small. Um, Apple is all tied up, so my iPad is not functional. What I'm bringing out here is that um, I'm a person of means that really couldn't participate tonight in a meaningful way. 
And so I think that we also have to be mindful and aware of accommodating people, at least as participants, not as planners, but as participants that are not interested in technology, not technologically savvy, um, or you're gonna just block out uh, segments of the population. So I kind of just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and you know what, if um, in the future, if we do this, if there are people that just don't feel comfortable with being online and they wanna call in, we could give them the slides ahead of time so they could click through the slides ahead of time in just a PDF format. You know, they're not gonna have the interactive ability that we have with a video, so they are gonna lose some of it. Um, and, and, you know, right now we are living in this technological world and, and um, you know, on one hand, it's great that we have the technology, but boy, is it frustrating when it doesn't work the way you want it to work. Um, and so it's kind of a double-edged sword in that way. Um, so yeah, it, there, there are going to be people that aren't going to have the um, access to it like we do. Um, so we just, yeah, I think it's good to, to keep that in mind um, and maybe give those people some extra help. Um, so we are going to do this probably in May again, and we've got some great stuff coming up for you in May. Um, Rhea is actually going to be doing some stuff. Rhea, do you want to talk a little bit about on May 4th, uh, as long as it, what, what you're going to be doing, same time, 630, and we'll give you the link. Sure. Um, I'm going to be speaking about how we can um, live in such a way that we aren't just throwing all of the uh, steps for towards sustainability out the window. I know that for our house, um, typically we don't use very much plastic at all, but we've had to make some exceptions um, in the name of health um, for ourselves and for others as well. And uh, we'll be talking about ways that it hasn't affected us as much because we haven't been going out and needing to hoard toilet paper because that's something that we don't use in our house. Um, so I'll be talking about those aspects a little bit. And then uh, also May 4th, we have Grow Pittsburgh coming and they're going to speak about um, just how they grew from just this novel idea and blossomed into this amazing organization, nonprofit organization that helps the greater Pittsburgh area in a lot of wonderful ways. So they'll also be meeting with us on May 4th. Great. Thanks so much for that. And so um, we can send out a link. Um, Kelly, thank you for all you do with uh, helping with our outreach. Kelly's the one sending you the emails behind the scenes and doing all that fun stuff and posting it on Facebook. So she'll, um, she'll be uh, on board to hopefully get that information out there. We might already have some of it out there on Facebook. Um, and uh, Mary helps her with that a little bit, um, making some of the graphics and stuff. So um, we are trying to work together as best as we can as a team. And we actually, on a weekly basis, put all this into practice <laughs> as we're planning these, this, uh, these events for you guys. So, so where is the recording of this meeting going? Yeah, so um, it will actually, I have it set to record to my computer, so it will download onto my computer, and then I can put it somewhere. Um, we don't currently have um, a place to put it, but we can find a place to put it, and it's also available on Zoom. I will get a link to it as well, I believe. So we could put it, we could put it on Facebook, uh, wherever people want to see it, or we can is email it, people. Is it, is it editable before it gets placed anywhere? No. Uh, well, you can edit it. Like I could edit it with my iMovie, um, but it's not fun. I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, it, it takes some time to edit it and then you have to you have to wait for it to re, um, re uh, generate itself, which takes a long time. So um, just you doing those little videos I did for you in the presentation today took half my day um, to, to, I mean, luckily I'm, we're using the videos for more than one presentation, but, uh, and it saved us time along the way, but 
but just to do it, it, it takes some maneuvering. Um, so okay. is, Zoom, is Zoom a Google company? It's not, no. Okay. So if we, if we didn't want to do Zoom, we could also, we could do Google Meetings instead. The cool thing about Zoom and why we picked Zoom is because we can actually go into breakout sessions right now, which we're going to do. Um, and everyone at the beginning said what breakout session they wanted to be in. But here's the thing. Uh, not everybody said that they wanted to be in a breakout session. So I have some folks in different breakout sessions. Um, but I, there are some folks that are not going to be in any breakout sessions unless they let me know. So um, for landscaping and land management, I have Lois. Agriculture and food, I have Rhea. Building renewables and infrastructure, I have Josh. Um, health and wellness, I have Alyssa. And single use reduction, I have no one. So, um, are you creating the groups then, Julian? I can. I can't stick around because I have to get my kids in bed soon and make oh. sure they've done their homework. Um, but if you, if I didn't call your name, if you want to tell me what group you want to be a, a part of, I can put you guys in your groups. Jillian, Sally had messaged, I guess maybe the message just went to me that she's in the health and wellness group. So I don't know, maybe you didn't catch that one. Awesome. And I think we have some people that only, you know, only one person was going to that group. It looked like they all were, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kelly, I don't know where you want to go. Uh, Richard, I think, left. Yeah. Yeah, he had to leave. It's just um, us planners now. Um, so, Ray and I had been working on the gardening of agriculture. Well, so I, I actually would propose at this point, based on um, there's nobody in the groups other than the leaders, basically, that we come up with a strategy to reach out to the people that were in the groups before and try to have an offline meeting. Um, in however we choose to do that mm -hmm. um, because otherwise we're just talking to ourselves 